This first video then is going to look at brain development. Now, on your specification, it says you need to know a basic knowledge of brain development. So from simple neural structures in the womb, we need to know certain parts of the brain, brainstem, thalamus, cerebellum and cortex and what they do. And also the development of autonomic functions, sensory processing, how we learn movement and cognition. Now, it sounds like a lot of long words there, but it will become clearer as we go through the video. We've also got to know the different roles of nature and nurture. So the first thing we're going to look at is how the brain develops in the womb. Now, you can see this little image over here on the right, which gives you a little bit of an idea of how your spine brain changes. Now, in the third week of pregnancy, that's when brain development starts. So cells start to multiply and form something called a neural plate. And that then folds in on itself and we get something called the neural tube. So that's what you can see in that image on the left side of the image there. The three weeks, we have something called the neural tube. Then during the fourth week, that neural tube starts to divide into our spinal cord, our forebrain, our midbrain, our hindbrain. So it starts to develop all these parts that we know as our brain and spinal cord. In the sixth week, that forebrain then divides into two areas. One's going to become the cortex, which we're going to look at later in this video, and another part develops into the thalamus. And this is where we start to get all these different neurons and synapses starting to develop in the spinal cord. By the 15th week, our cerebellum forms, and by the sixth month of pregnancy, the brain is fully formed, although it's obviously not at its full size. So by the time you're born, um, the brain's about 25% that of an adult brain at birth. So that's just a quick run through of what happens in the brain, in the womb, regarding the brain. Now, there's different parts of the brain named on your specification. The brainstem, cerebellum, the thalamus, and the cortex. The first one we're going to look at is your brainstem. Now, this is the part of the brain that connects with your spinal cord. So it connects your brain to your spinal cord. And it starts to develop early because it's vital for what we call autonomic functions. They're all the things like your heartbeat, your breathing, digestion, all those things you don't need to think about, those automatic functions. So it's also the most highly developed at birth because it's in charge of all those things we need for survival, like heartbeat and breathing. It's also important for sending things like motor or movement messages or sensory information from the brain to our body, but also from our body to our brain. So it acts like that communicator between the brain and body. Next, we've got the cortex. Now, the cortex is like an outer covering, a bit like a tea cozy of the brain. And this is where all our cognition or thinking takes place. For example, speech and language processing, all the things that require us to think occur in the cortex. Now, cortex itself means bark. And that's quite handy when you're thinking about this because it covers our brain a little bit like the bark of a tree. And it's divided into two halves and we're going to call those the hemispheres, the right hemisphere and our left hemisphere. So it's about three millimeters thick, um, runs around that whole outside of your brain, and it's actually only found in mammals. And all of our thinking and processing goes on in that thin layer of the brain. And although it's only three millimeters, it is actually folded many, many times. So it is a lot larger than you might think. And then we've got different parts of our cortex and they all have different roles. So for example, the frontal cortex, so this part right at the front of your brain, is responsible for thinking. And this really is the last part of the brain to fully mature and develop after your adolescent years. Now I mentioned the word hemispheres. This is just to show you what they look like in a picture. Your brain's basically divided into two halves. And each hemisphere has more or less the exact same structure. But it's just there to show you an image of what the hemispheres look like. Now, we also have something called our cerebellum. The cerebellum is our little brain. Now, its location is at the back of our brain and it's behind our brain stem. So it's right near the top of the spinal cord. And the cerebellum really has three main roles. Firstly, it coordinates movement and balance. Um, it receives information from the cortex and other parts of the brain and turns that into movement and motor activity. 
and also it contributes to other functions such as speaking, emotion, language. It has a range of different roles, the cerebellum. And again, it's one of the last parts of our brain to fully mature and develop. Then we've got the thalamus. So there are two thalamus, one in each hemisphere. And you could only see it if you cut the brain right in half. It's deep right in the middle of the brain. And it's the size and shape, basically, of a walnut. And it's known as the deep chamber because it's located deep within the center of the brain. Now, the thalamus has a range of different roles. It acts as a sensory processing station. So it gets signals from all of your different senses and then turns them into behaviors and motor responses. Also, all information passes through the thalamus on the way to our cortex. The thalamus is a little bit like a relay station. So all the information that we receive goes through the thalamus and then goes off to our cortex to be processed. For example, it receives all the visual information from the eye and then it will send it to the part of the brain where all that visual information gets processed. I also mentioned at the start, you need to understand the difference between the role of nature and nurture. So when we're talking about nature, we're talking about our genes, whatever we inherit from our parents. And when we talk about nurture, we're talking about our environment, our upbringing. Now, this will also include all the experiences while we're in the womb. They can Anything that happens to us while we're in the womb, the environment there, that will all class as nurture. Now, regarding nature, the way our brain forms, which we discussed at the start, all these things that happen at different weeks, it is due to nature. It's what happens biologically. But it's not the only factor that will affect our brain development. For example, the folds in the brain or the cortex of identical twins is not the same. So therefore, something else must be playing a role that changes our brain development. This is where nurture comes in. Now, we're going to look at a few quick examples here of how your environment can affect your brain development. So if smoking, if a mother's smoking while they have a child in the womb, that child has been shown to have reduced brain growth and development whilst they're in the womb. Same with infection. If a mother develops certain infections such as rubella during pregnancy, it can result in brain damage or hearing loss. Also, voices. Children are far more likely to recognize voices of their mother when they're born. And again, this shows that brain change, your brain does change in response to external stimulus and things that go on in the environment. But overall, both nature and nurture must play a role. However, it is incredibly difficult to say which one has more of an effect.